The Steve Gill Show. Hey, welcome back in. This is the Steve Gill Show, the bonus hour. 737-9522. That's 737-9522. You can also send your comments via email. Steve at GillReport.com. Steve at GillReport.com. And uh, would ask uh, that you uh, get on the phone lines if you've got questions for Senator Bob Corker, who's in the studio with us today. Uh, Michael writes in, Senator, uh, preface my question by stating I believe he has been part of the problem in Washington. He's voted to raise the debt limit and overspent. My question, how are his financial advisors advising him to prepare for the eventual collapse of the U.S. economy? Where is he putting his money? I guess, first of all, debt limit and and spending. Yeah, you know, we had a a chance, as I've mentioned many times, to cut spending by $2.1 trillion. And what I found in Washington is any time you have an opportunity to cut spending, take it. And so we cut $900 billion in discretionary spending. Super Committee was put together to cut another 1.2. They couldn't do it. And so we have the sequestration process in place. And so, you know, if you do that every time the debt ceiling comes, you actually have a balanced budget within 10 years. So, so look, uh, what I found, what I, you take any – when you have an opportunity for cuts – take them and enforce them. One of the things that's problematic about what we did is we established a discretionary spending cap last year of a trillion forty three billion, this year a trillion forty seven billion. Unfortunately some Republicans have voted to bust the cap. And so we've had two bills that have come out of the Senate uh, one was the highway bill, and the other was the postal reform bill, if that's what you want to call it. It was anything but a reform bill. Both of those violated the Budget Control Act that we passed last August 2nd. And what I've been saying to my caucus is, wait a minute, guys. I mean, if we're all going to hang together to cut spending, and yet there are some of us who are going to vote to bust the cap, I'm sorry. The next time this comes around, you know, first time, fooey on you. Second time, you know. You so, can't so, count on no, me to that, do yeah, it. So, gonna... so, so, you know, that's the problem. And I had sent a release out recently. I think you saw where John Boehner doubled down on this again. He said, look, next time we have a debt ceiling, we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to cut the exact amount we're raising. I sent a press release out that day and said, look, I was very interested to, to see uh, Boehner's comments. Uh, I'm very interested to hear that. What you need to do is make sure the House does not send those bills back where they violate the Budget Control Act. But look, spending is the biggest issue our nation faces. Uh, the deficits, uh, we've had added $5 trillion over the last uh, three years. And it is, it is our, we are our greatest enemy ourselves. And, and we're seeing the, the collapse in Europe as they try to yeah. deal with austerity programs, which means spending cuts, and people who've gotten used to the gravy train start protesting. Are we going to have any more will here to cut when people start screaming about cuts than they do there? It's almost like the Tocqueville has risen from the dead when you watch what's happening right now in Europe, where politicians who were trying to adhere to the austerity measures that were put in place by the European Union are being kicked out. And we're going to see on June 17th in, in Greece what the outcome is going to be. And if they vote in people that are not willing to live by these austerity measures, then they're going to be out of the European Union. Spain will be the next. It already is becoming. We're reading that daily, the next problem. And here's what I, you know. And what look, does that mean to us? How does that affect us? Well, I, I think our banking system is probably not particularly exposed to Europe right now. Most of the the, the instruments that we own in Europe through our banking systems um, are in Northern Europe, the companies that are actually, uh, the countries that are actually performing well. The problem is it affects us economically. And here's what I've been saying for months. I do not understand why this administration does not lay out uh, what they will do to, again, bring us back in line. Because it seems to me that what's happening in our nation right now, people are not investing in capital. Companies are not. They're eking out every dime of profit, profit they can without investing in capital, without investing in employees, because they're concerned about the future. So if you have these volatilities that affect you from overseas, it seems like the one thing you would do is build up your forces here by, by strengthening the country and dealing with these huge bu- budget deficits that we have. And, and, again, it's just unbelievable to me that the administration is not laying out a plan as to how we're going to deal with it. And this. politically, they're actually continuing their assault on capital and the free market system. Your former opponent, Congressman Harold Ford Jr., has even sided with, with the right side on this one, saying the attacks on Bain, the attack on the free market system and investment, that's a bad idea. Even Democrats are running away from the president on these these attacks on the free market system. Well, it's uh, – look, uh, you know, uh, our founding fathers, as uh, – 
the AEI has said many times, uh, our founding fathers put in place uh, through the Declaration life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And the thing that makes people happier than anything else in the world is earned success. That's what makes people happy. And our free enterprise system, more than any other system that has ever existed, has allowed people to have that earned success. That's why people the have kind, come here. <laughs> the kind that you have. The kind that you have by creating what you've done here and others. And you know, the fact is that it is under assault, and we've gone through a period of, of self-doubt after this financial crisis, and a lot of people are buying in to these attacks. And we need to move beyond this, get our fiscal house in order, and get back to making this country strong again, and certainly fully embracing the free enterprise system. What concerned me about this presidential race, the, the, the nomination, the Republican nomination race, was we had Republicans attacking the free enterprise system. And well, we as Newt Gingrich has pointed out, it didn't work. Work, so we surprised the president's doing this yeah. real quickly tim we got about a minute uh, what's your question go ahead tim yes uh mr corker what do you think about uh, lamar alexander stepping down in leadership position to work with the liberals in the senate and then the one he's working with up there retires what was the last part um and the one he was working with up there i guess it was uh was it durbin no um I'm not sure who he was. He was referring. He was working with one of the big liberals in uh, in Washington. Then he retired. Lamar stepped down from his leadership position. Yeah, I, 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 Lamar didn't step down to work with liberals. Lamar stepped down to be himself and to be the independent person that he's been for a long, long time. He is a much happier person, and uh, I could not serve with a better person in the United States Senate. Senator Bob Cork, we'll get you back in again soon. Thank you for coming Thank in you. studio. Thank, Thank you for taking phone calls. And uh, I know you're traveling around the state a lot this this week, and folks will see you out and about. What are you, you're heading to Dixon here in just a little while, so you'll look for him over in Dixon. Thank Thanks you, Steve. Thanks for coming Good in. to see you.